In this tutorial in CyberLink Power Director, I'd like to show you a technique to take three photos and place them side by side on your screen, and then repopulate each of the three photos as often as you want in a sequence. Let me show you a little bit of what that might look like, and then we'll go ahead and get into the technique. I already have a background on the screen and I already have a music score on the screen. What I want to do is put the photos together and I'm only going to use three on each track to start with. I've labeled my tracks here left side, right side, and center. So what I'm going to do with my adjustments here, I'll give myself a little more room. I'm going to highlight three of these cell phone pictures and drag and drop them down in the left side area. Now what I've done is I've set my default uh, size for a photo to 9 seconds. I'll show you why in a moment. You could pick any number you like. Then I'll take the next three and drag them down on the right side. I'm going to adjust it over by 3 seconds. Then I'll take the third group of three and drop them down to what's called the center and I'll move them over three more seconds. And now I have left, center, and right. Now one thing I need to do is they all will appear right in the center of the screen and the bottom line will overlay them. So I need to do some keyframing here. My next step is to take, I only need to take one picture in each row. Now these rows could be many slides wide. So I'm going to take the first picture and we're going to make it somewhat smaller here. And this is called my left side. So I'm going to move it over to the left in the middle of this section here. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I have the next one is the right side. So we'll change the size of that one. And then we'll do the same thing with the last one. We'll take this one, we'll leave it in the center. And now I have left, center, and right. So they won't come in on top of each other. The next thing to do is to click on the first photo in each line and right click on it and click on Copy Keyframe Attributes. Then I highlight all the others in that line, right click and do Paste Keyframe Attributes. I'll get an error message, but that's fine, and I'll click on OK. So I take this one over here, right-click and do Copy Keyframe Attributes. The other two, right-click and I do Paste. This one here, click on OK. I do the th first one in the last row, right-click, Copy Keyframe Attributes, and then we paste them in. Click on OK. And now, when we play this, watch what happens. And you could go on and on as much as you want. They would replicate each other because each one inherited the location keyframes for that particular row, if you will, that particular track. That's one way to do this. Now I'd like to show you another way in which you can jazz it up if you want to a little bit. Let me give you another example.
we've done to change that is we've changed the first slide in each row again. So I'm going to go back to the first slide on the left side and double click it. And that will get me into my PIP designer. I have to decide how long I want it to be till it winds up in this position. Let me say I want it to be there in about, oh, let's go two seconds or so. And then I'm going to set a position, scale, and rotation keyframe. Then all I need to do is go back to the beginning of that clip. And then uh, I have to change it where I want it to come from. Let's say we want it to come in smaller. We want it to come in from the left side and we'll have it come in after it's rotated a little bit. And that sets all those keyframes on the left side when I move my indicator there. So if I go ahead and play this, that one will rotate in. I'll click on OK. Then what I do, I just right click and do what I did before, copy keyframe attributes. And then I take the other two or as many as I have in that row, right click and paste the attributes and click on OK. And now for the second row, which is my right side, I double click, get into the pip editor. I'll, I'll give it the same approximate time. And then we'll do position, scale, and rotation. That's where it winds up. We move our playhead to the beginning, and then we're going to shrink it down some, move it off the screen to the right, give it a little bit of rotation. It sets those keyframes. Now that one is done, so I right click and copy the attributes. I click on the others in the row, right click and paste. And I'm OK with that. And then we just repeat that with the third item in the center. Again, we're going to move in about two uh, uh, two seconds here and set those three same keyframe attributes move to the beginning and we're going to change the size here to smaller so I can move up and place it above and see where I'm at and then we'll do a little bit of rotation here go back to fit if I want. I can't see it. It's off the screen. Click on OK. Right click and copy the new attributes and click on any other photos in that row and paste the keyframe attributes and click on OK. And then when we're done, we'll see the difference here. Go ahead and play it. And we have the left one rotate in and the right one rotate in and the middle one rotate in. And then the left one clears and a new one rotates in. Same way with the right side and same way with the middle. And so we can repeat this over and over again. All we have to do is when we add new images to the right side, we can take any of the ones we've already worked on, copy the keyframe attributes and paste them to the new slides. And you could go on for a long, long time if you wanted to and make this as long a project as you desire.